that it's much. It's good to see you. Well, it's very good to see you too. Yeah. Yeah. I never know who you are. You're always in the plane somewhere. I'm a bit worried, no? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Because look at how you're laughing together. That's that's a great start. Because we start. see you on screen. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Um, yeah. Mark, Mark Benioff. Good yes, to see you here. Thank you. Um, for, thank you for having me. Founder, chairman, CEO of Salesforce. Yes, that's right. All right. Got Andre Hoffman with us. Hello. Vice Hello, chairman Patrick. of uh, Hoffman La Roche. Both companies well known. However. The reason why you're here is also because you're champions for nature, and uh, not overnight. It's not because you jumped on the bandwagon when it certainly became something one had to do. You're doing for a long time. So let's dig in a little bit into that. But let's start just by saying, you came in 6 a.m. this morning. <laughs> you're not here much longer. Your takeaway from today? Well, I mean, it's been astonishing for me. I have never been to a COP conference before. But uh, this morning really took me aback because a lot of the things that I deeply care about I saw getting manifested in, in the conference on the stage. And to hear it from the voices of world leaders, philanthropists, CEOs, all at once, I was like, wow, I'm not the only one feeling this way. And um, look, we've deforested our planet. We've gone from six trillion trees to three trillion trees. Let's just start there. We've got to put these trees back. You know, that's one of the reasons that Andre Hoffman and I have kind of created uh, 1T.org, you know, with the World Economic Forum, that we've got to get a trillion trees. Every trillion trees, you know, sequesters 200 gigatons of carbon. That's a big deal. And we've only emitted about 100 gigatons of carbon since the first Industrial Revolution. But when we deforested six, sorry, when we deforested three trillion trees, that's 600 gigatons of carbon. So this is important and we need to stop the deforestation. We've got to get the trees back on the planet and mm. nurture our biodiversity. This is what it's all about for me. Mm. And mm. to see it happen this morning, I just couldn't believe it. It so was you saw awesome. all the announcements made. Well, it huh? was amazing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Andre? Well, I, I just thought that um, there seems to be an inverse relationship about the amount of masks and the amount of gloominess and the sort of beauty of what we heard today. A lot of people came up with very, bu with very uh, bullish statements. We are talking about nature being restored. We are not talking just about carbon here. We're talking about carbon and biodiversity. And the two of them are linked, and you will, we will not be able to solve the CO2 emission, the CO2 emission issue if we don't do something about nature. Planting trees is a first step forward, mm. but we also need to to regenerate uh, biodiversity. And this is exciting to see that people here believe this and are doing something about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yes, chuffed, excited. That's, what, that's how what yeah. we are. I mean, that's exciting. Well, I mean, look, number one, we all have to go net zero. You know, Salesforce is fully net zero today, fully renewable. We're making further cuts to our emissions. All of our suppliers have to agree to become net zero. That's table stakes. Table stakes is net zero. Two is, we need to go out there and sequester all that carbon that's out there, but re replace all that and restore all that and preserve all that biodiversity. Mm -hmm. and that's number two. That, that's critical. And the third thing that we're seeing here that's so exciting is all these ecopreneurs, people coming up with new solutions, yeah, yeah, new great. capabilities. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right behind us is Will Marshall. He's the CEO of Planet Labs. He's talking about low-hanging satellites. He's got a satellite launching next year that he can map the amount of carbon on the planet where it is, but also methane and where it is. We've never had full transparency on methane on the planet. We'll be able to see where the methane leaks are. Th that's a huge thought, and not just him, but so many ecopreneurs doing amazing new things. So. But that's how I really think about what's happening here today. And that's what's so exciting at the moment, that we've been talking for a nature-based solution for a while, planting trees, restoring wetlands, re replanting mangroves, but we need help. It's not going to be enough. And no new technologies, and in particular this technology which allows us to really capture what the reality is and to analyze all this data in a way which will allow us to restore better, I'm, I think that's very exciting. And I'm, I'm glad you, you, you're mentioning that. Yeah, and we've been talking about this for years. We actually started in the oceans together. Mm. We're both passionate about the oceans, but when you look at the major issues that are going on in the oceans, you know, overfishing, which is, has to be addressed, you know, coral bleaching has to be addressed, um, you know, the role of things like septic systems and fertilizers and how they're, you know, polluting all, all, 
our, our lagoons and, uh, and coral reefs. But acidification and what's happening with the ocean, well, that's all about climate change. And that's all because the ocean sequesters 20,000 gigatons of carbon. It's our biggest carbon sink. Yeah. So if you want to do something for the ocean, you know, let's talk about trees. Indeed. And that's how it Mangrove. all, that's for me how it all of a sudden I started to understand, oh, it's all linked together. It's all integrated. It's all this beautiful, virtuous cycle. And we've got to think about the trees. We're thinking about the ocean. We're thinking about the biodiversity. You know, we're, we're not separate from nature. We are nature. That's what we think. And when we start, all of a sudden start to think that we're somehow separate, that's when we forget we're all connected. We're all one, and we're one with nature as well. And, and, and if you talk about interconnectivity, you also need to look at the whole trophic chain. I mean, uh, according to WWF, we, we have lost nearly 70% of species of vertebrates in the past 40 years. 70%. I mean, this is something that's never going to come back. Extinction is forever. It's a one-way street. And so it's very exciting to see that uh, we are now putting the, the, the place, uh, all these factors in the right place. Yes, carbon is an issue, but we will not solve carbon until we solve the, we, we say we, we, we deal with biodiversity and we will not be able to deal with biodiversity if we don't look at our human systems, at our social and at our human systems. And that's very important as well. So ESNG for company, each, each letter has an important issue. This is uh, so easy to moderate. I mean, the passion <laughs> comes through, which is pretty amazing. There's one question I'd like to ask you, and I'm not sure people really know about it. Um, where does your passion as you said, it's not just the oceans, not just the trees, but it's really the global commons. Where does that come from? What, what drove you? Because you could say, we built our businesses. That's already a major feat. I'm very happy with that. It gives me enough to do already. But where does your passion come from on the broader nature agenda? So <clears throat> if, 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 uh, if I can start, um, uh, our company has set as a role, we want to do today what the patient needs tomorrow. Now, if you want to have to see tomorrow, we need to make sure we're still around. And so we need to build sustainability to what we do. And I really come to, to this from one side, from the natural history background that my family has always brought. My, one, my father was one of the founders of WWF. But we also look at it from a business perspective. If we don't have a sustainable uh, humanities model, we will not be able to bring this innovation that the patient needs going forward. So it, uh, sustainability is not something you reserve to people who are interested in natural uh, history and to and, you know, the, the people who love nature. It's much more than that. It's a system that allows it to, to keep a certain balance between the three main capitals that you have, the social capital, the human capital, and the natural capital. And we will only be able to create a stable model if we understand the interdependence of each one of these capitals with the produce capital, which is the one we measure. Right, and so what you're saying, the distance between your business interests and what's required to keep this planet habitable aren't really far apart from well, each other. I'm, I'm saying we, humanity, have to, f to plan for a long-term future. And we won't be able to do that if we destroy nature. Mark. Well, for me, I'm going to have to give credit to my mentors. Because, look, I, I love being in the ocean. And you know, everyone has been in the ocean goes, I love the ocean. And, and then I could see, oh, there's some changes going on in the ocean. And where I live in the South Pacific, I've gone to a lot of places like Atutaki, where I get in the ocean, and the, the coral, the lagoon is just gone. I said, so what happened here? Well, the fertilizers, the runoff, you know, kind of came down. We didn't know what we were doing, and we've wiped out our lagoon. And I started to learn by just being in the ocean, oh, I can understand the changes, what's going on. I became very passionate about the ocean, and I love being in the ocean, and the dolphins and the whales, and I've had the opportunity to go you know, all, all over the South Pacific and experience that. And I was at an incredible climate conference where I live in San Francisco. And um, I was uh, with uh, Jane Goodall, who everyone knows, an incredible person. And I'm talking to her and explaining my passion for the ocean and what I'm doing. And I have an ocean institute and I'm investing in the ocean. And she looks me right in the eyes, like laser beam, like, whoa. And she says, well, this is very nice what you're doing for the ocean, but what are you doing about the forest and the trees? And I didn't have an answer. I didn't really have that feeling that I have today about that, the cycle that between the trees and the ocean and the soils and how it's all, could the biodiversity and us. 
and she kind of set me on my quest because I was kind of like, yeah, what, what, what am I doing for the forest and the trees? And uh, that's when I bumped into the research of Tom Crowther and another one of my, my mentors, somebody uh, that we know very well, Al Gore, came to me and said, have you read the research of Tom Crowther at ETH University in uh, Zurich? And I said, no, I, I haven't read that. And then the head of my Ocean Institute said the same thing to me. And I said, well, this is just too much of a coincidence. I'm going to look at this. And what he said was, if we add a trillion trees back on the planet, we can do a tremendous job in mitigating climate change because it's going to sequester 200 gigatons of carbon. And that's where I always said, is that really true? What is that? And then as we kind of got into it, it became clear, yes, this, uh, this linkage and this carbon math that the ocean is sequestering 20,000 gigatons of carbon, the soils are sequestering 3,000 gigatons of carbon and 200 gigatons per trillion trees. And if you put it all together, how do we, how do we make this work? Because, you know, I'll say, I'll, I'll say to people all the time, well, how much, how much carbon did we create this year? We didn't create any carbon. It's just that man is remarkably good, and woman is remarkably good at moving the carbon around. So we're good at moving the carbon around, but the carbon math is very clear. So how do we get the carbon back down? We've burned a lot of carbon through coal, through fossil fuels. It's gone in emissions. Some has gone to the ocean. Some has gone to the soil. How do we bring it back? Well, here, through the biodiversity. And this is the, that, this is the power that we have the ability to become aware of this and then, and then nurture it and, and, and move it forward. Let me ask you to switch from your personal passion, which clearly blends with the business, but put on your business leadership hat. And, you know, today was, was a good day, but frankly, like 24 hours ago, it was like, okay, pledges are really in, inadequate. The goals are insufficient. The financial commitments fall very much short. Uh, we pretty much fail on any indicator on transforming any sectors, like, electrification of vehicles. So I felt like if you're a business leader and you think of the situation we have, you probably would shut that business down. <laughs> it's just not a good, viable business. Um, but we can't do that. This is our planet. Um, I'd like to ask you, um, you're setting high bars in whatever you've done in your business. You dream big. You ask a lot from other people. What do you think it will take from where we are today to turn this around? So just like you think of it in the future, say, okay, I think these are the next really bold moves we got to make to fix this. Well, I, I'll come back to, and I'm glad you keep mentioning our business, because I think that our business is the greatest platform for change, that we can be role models, we can be examples. That's why I'm so proud that Salesforce is net zero today and fully renewable now and making more commitments because then I can show others how to do that. Mm. And I think it's more than just the carbon accounting or being able to kind of look at how we're, how we're managing all of our carbon relationships. This is where I think our business and our leadership as CEOs is very important because it's gonna start with like number one, we all have to become net zero. And that is individually but organizationally as well. Mm -hmm. And we can do it. We know how to do it. We can do it. We are doing it. And this, this, is, this is the first step. And I think that as we look at the second step, restoring the biodiversity, the third step, creating new solutions, you know, uh, ecopreneurship. I, another example, I tell you that I just was with the CEO, Zach Parisa mm -hmm. of NCX. This is an amazing company that's using artificial intelligence and biometricians to quantify where this carbon is and then be able to kind of say, oh, these landowners, they cannot cut down these trees because we need this biodiversity to sequester this carbon. And then contact these landowners and get them to agree and then have a relationship with a company like mine or others and say, hey, we'll keep these trees in place but we're going to have to be compensated for that because we've been cutting down the trees for our income. Oh, no, you don't have to do that anymore. You can have this relationship with Salesforce or whatever the company is. This is, I think this is a winning formula. It's working for us. How do we scale it? How do we get everyone on board? How, how do we get everyone to realize this is, this is possible? And then, not just for large businesses, but also for small and medium businesses. I think this will be the real challenge. Absolutely. So, 
I talked to one of our really good customers and they're like, oh, this is great what you're doing, congratulations. But for all of our suppliers, maybe they've got five or 10 or 20 employees, how will they do that? That is gonna be a, a greater challenge. I think it's actually our next great challenge to bring everyone into this, not just the elites, but you know, the whole, the whole ecosystem really operate at the ground level, bring everybody into this net zero world. But I would like to sort of contradict what you said, saying that we should shut the business down. No, it's a turnaround situation. We can do a lot by, by, by using the entrepreneurial spirit, which has been the success of our business for the past 250 years, the industrial age. You know, how do you save a, an ailing business? You cut the cost down, you stop pollution, you go to net zero. I would even prefer us to go to absolute zero. I mean, compensating with nature is just a, a transition phase to get to an activity where humans do not emit CO2 anymore. So we, we need to, to, to cut this emission and we need to restore the turnover. We need to bring back nature. And that's how you, you bring a business back to life. And uh, the planet is going to need an, a lot of effort, a lot of regenerative effort before we come back to this equilibrium which we I think we have destroyed over the past 300 years of the industrial age. And that's something we need to, we need to accept. But I insist on this notion of uh, absolute zero. You know, this is a step on, in the right direction. We will we will restore nature, we will restore wetlands, we will restore uh, um, uh, forests, but we will not, this will not be enough. We also need to stop emitting carbon, which of yeah. course mm -hmm. are in and a that, good way to do. That's the number one thing. We have mm -hmm. to reduce emissions, and we need to sequester, and we need new technology. We exactly. have to do all of these things. Yeah. And, and, and there is absolutely no reason to believe we can't do it. Mm -hmm. That's the business acumen yeah. that you bring to this challenge. It is really, really energizing and like calling on your peers to step up the game. Um, now, you can do all of that. That's a big part of the solution. But you can't do it alone. So we have a large audience here that is listening to you. And we got a lot of leaders from very different sectors of society. Um, what kind of help do you need? that will enable the kind of unleash that creativity that business has, the ingenuity to address the problem. What is that help you need? For that I, to I think the thing, uh, on a very simple and basic level, what we need is a new accounting system. We need to make sure that our efforts are measured in terms of impact on the systems we've just talked about, on the, on the human, the social, and the natural capital. And if we can understand this, then we can manage it. And suddenly, the, uh, the business activity becomes a regenerative activity and not just a consuming activity. So we need that. Um, we also need, of course, the support of the majority of population on the planet. Business is a force for good, not a force for bad. It's thanks to business that we are better fed and, 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 and healthier than we've ever been in the past. So we should not the baby with the water, uh, mm -hmm. the baby with the bathwater. You know, there, there is something there that can be done. And already now, I mean, you can you can see that in, in, in business. I mean, your employees don't want to work for you if you behave badly. Uh, your customers don't want to buy your product if you cannot talk about uh, about uh, climate change or, or purpose of your company. The banks are lending money at ridiculous rates to people who emit too much carbon. Uh, the regulators are talking, I mean, the countries are talking here about changing the way we, we move. I mean, all these signals are there. And uh, because society wants it, we are going to have to change. And some of us have already done it and some other people can do it. Yeah, and I, I think another person who I've been so impressed in, Andre, and I've spent a lot of time with, Ursula van der Leyen, you know, the president of the European Union, wow, that she's come up with this EU Green Deal. This is fantastic right. because now we can start to put a price on carbon and we can see who's emitting the carbon and she's going to charge them for the carbon that they're emitting. And countries who are coming and trying to want to, they want to trade with Europe and they're going to bring their carbon with them, she's going to charge them more. And this idea that there's a multi-trillion dollar part of our economy that's out there called carbon, that today we don't have not really tapped into. This could be a major economic accelerator for the whole planet, but it could also save the planet at the same time. And it's going to start here in Europe. I think that that is very, I don't know if actually, is, is, is this still part of Europe? I'm not sure, actually. But it's close enough. But, you know, it, it's not going to start in the United States. It's going to start in Europe. And it's the EU Green Deal, I think, yeah. is a, a critical part. That idea that we can create a carbon economy. Uh, I think with this, this is going to be transformational for how CEOs 
in and, a, in and a if you bring it back to, 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 the, to the current moment, you know, the, uh, after the pandemic, uh, most businesses were in need of some liquidity. So governments have uh, uh, made trillions of dollars available all over the planet to sort of start the economy again. That's a moment where we can actually change the condition. So charging for carbon, uh, putting green conditionality in on these loans, this is a historical point. And I think that's what we've seen today. You know, where all these declarations were in that, in that, uh, in that context. I think you have really been convincing in terms of mm. your business leadership to bring into this challenge. Now, mm. I know you've also spoken to activists. You know, Andre specifically mm. been part of these conversations, carefully listening what the young generation is asking from the older generation. And there's a real dialogue, I would say so. Um, but if, if they would ask, you know, we've heard business talk before about we're going to do the right thing. What would be your message to them to say, no, this time it is, you know, we really mean it. We mean business in terms of safeguarding our global commons. What would be your message to the younger activists? Um, I, I, there, are, there are several ways in which you can change society. Huh? There, there, is, um, there is the parliamentary process, uh, so vote for the people who are going to do the right things. There is the, the, the economic activities, and that's the private sector. But then there is also, and... Um, I'm not going to make myself very popular by saying that, but there's also a way of trying to go faster by breaking the rules. And in Switzerland, I don't know if it's the same in the US, we have this young brand of activists who are actually destroying things because they want to go to court. They want to make sure that the judicial system actually gives them a fair hearing. So they will do some civil disobedience act in the hope of provoking a reflection through the judicial system. So if you look at you know, the governments, the parliament, and the judicial system, you have suddenly several ways of making sure that you influence your agenda. But whatever we say is don't give in uh, the, 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 the career you're about to build will be stabler if you factor in the nature risk. So get on with it. Mark. Oh, you have to include them as part of the conversation. This, this is a critical part, and they're part of the solution, and a lot of the answers are probably with them. So that, that's, re that's reality, is that, it, you know, we're not separate from each other. It's not business and activists and and politicians. Exactly. Yeah, that's and, exactly true. You know, it's, yeah. it, it's one humanity and, and by the way, and one nature. And nature, we're not separate from all of this. When we can realize the unity that we have, that, that's when I think we'll make the most progress. When we create the separation, that's when everything slows down. So let's, let's have a multi-stakeholder dialogue. Let's really have a discussion and do all the right things. And I think that they are a critical part of the uh, solution in every possible yeah, way. We are in this together. You're absolutely right. Well, I mean, what a better way to close it. I mean, we all own together the global commons that allow us to live on this planet, which is so beautiful. And so for you, this message <coughs> getting across, say we're, we're, all t we're all on the same team, by the way. Now it's time to fix it together. I want to thank you. Thank Mark, you. for coming to the Nature Newsroom. And I want to thank you, Andre, for being such passionate advocates for business for a force for good and nature champions. I wish you a very good COP26. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much.